you are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you need and want more money and funding for your real estate deals, regardless of your credit, your experience, or your verification of income, don't go anywhere because in just a second, I'm going to plug you into the money. Well, welcome to Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, known as the Private Money Authority. And if you are brand new to the show and first time listening or watching, uh, we talk all things about real estate investing. Uh, primarily, we talk about single family houses. But anyway, we want to welcome you to the show. I'm so excited to have as my guest today, Nelson and Jonathan Faircloth very successful real estate investors down in the Florida area. But before I bring them on, I want to remind everybody, it's right around the corner, just a few, few short weeks away. The last real estate investing cash flow conference is coming right up. It's October 10th, 11th, and 12th, right here in Atlantic Beach, North Carolina. We got the movers and shakers in real estate investing coming from all over the nation. The last event we had, we had folks from California, Florida, Georgia, Texas, Indiana, uh, St. Louis, Mississippi, all over. And so what's happening at this event, you do not want to miss out. At the event, it's only a three-day event, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, October 10, 11, and 12. So you'll want to get right on over to the website at www.jayconner.com forward slash all in lowercase money podcast. Uh, get registered. In fact, uh, you're getting to, you're, uh, since you're listening or viewing here on the show, uh, you're able to come for free to this $3,000 event. Uh, the only thing you have is a $97 registration fee quick overview and we're going to jump right into my special guest that I, that I have here on with me today. Uh, at the event, uh, we'll have my private lenders at the event that you can network with. The first day, I'll dive deep into private money. We go on the bus tour and actually see our houses that are under renovation, those that are finished. You'll meet my team, my contractors, my interior designer, my virtual assistants, so that you can go back and duplicate this type of business model. The second day, I'll be teaching you my, the four pillars of my business, uh, and that is how we find them, fund them, flip them, and then automation. The third day is all about automation. The second day in the evening, uh, you'll be networking with my private lenders and et cetera. So get on over to the website and get registered. I look forward to seeing you at the event. Okay, so with that, I want to introduce you all to Nelson, the father, and Jonathan, the son of this amazing team uh, down in Florida. So Nelson and Jonathan, welcome to the show. Good. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for having us. Good morning. Uh, good, well, good morning. Glad to have you all on here. And so just to let everybody know, Nelson and Jonathan, uh, this father and son team, successful real estate investors. Uh, you all came into my world less than a year ago, right? Uh, from coming into my platinum, the platinum group and the mastermind group, you're a member of both groups. And so, yeah, it was less than a year ago. So let's go ahead and give them some bottom line numbers. And then I'm going to ask you some questions about your real estate investing business and how you do it. Since coming into my world, how much private money and funding have you gotten for your deals less than a year ago? Well, uh, private money and funding, we've, uh, we've, we've raised over $250,000 of private money and we've put the majority of that to work so far. Awesome. Awesome. And then how much uh, profit and equity have you gotten from your deals uh, since coming into my world? Well, and uh, I had told you 400,000 and I actually sat down and put pen to paper and it's actually getting closer to 600,000 now. Excellent. So we're, we're growing. Yes. That is fantastic. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, Nelson, let me start with you. What was, sure. your, what was your career or careers, I think it's plural, prior to you getting into real estate investing? Well, and you're right. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do and, and accomplish in life. And I've decided that I'm not going to ever retire. I'm just working towards other goals and dreams. Um, Longest hitch was in pharmaceutical sales to veterinarians. Uh, did that for 20 plus years with Pfizer, J and J, that type of thing. Yeah. All right. And how about you, Jonathan? Well, uh, I, I had a, a very uh, 
eclectic type uh, work history. So uh, I, whenever I was actually still in high school, this guy signed me over to the Army National Guard uh, <laughs> my junior year of high school, went to basic training, came back, finished my senior year and spent 12 years with the Army National Guard. Uh, a couple of deployments with them. And during that time, went ahead and uh, finished my schooling, got a master's degree and really been just working different jobs until going into real estate investing full, full time, uh, doing different things just to pay the bills. Um, anything from handyman to uh, did a little bit of time uh, working at Lowe's customer service and stuff like that. Right. So, Jonathan, when did you first get started in uh, real estate investing? Uh, really full time, uh, really hit the ground running around October of 2015. Okay. So it's oh, been, uh, yep. so, uh, almost, almost three years. Right. All right. Excellent. And, uh, Nelson, how about you? When did you do your first deal? Well, and mine goes back to the 1970s with some rental properties. And as a matter of fact, even owned a Connor mobile home <laughs> at one time. So, uh, I got more for my money in that one. It's still up, it's out of the four or five. That's the only one that's still around in the neighborhood. It's still here. <laughs> so uh, did a little bit of that. And then we did some uh, land, timberland investing and everything was going good until we got a little greedy in 2007 and tried to do some development stuff. And it was very poor timing. Yeah. So, yeah, we all remember what was going on in 2007, 2008, 2009. That's when I got cut off with the banks or cut off from the banks with no notice. But um, most people know that story. That was a big blessing in disguise. So, Nelson, what was it that drew you into real estate investing to begin with? Well, and, and that's a very good question. And I had spent a little bit of time thinking on that. But my dad had always kind of got me involved in some type of investments very early. We, of course, we were, we farmed and he allowed me to uh, do 20 acres on my own, take the profit and everything. And from that, I, I invested in like stocks, bonds and stuff like that. And then I found out very quick that I wasn't in control of that. So I wanted to invest in something that I had a little more control over. So it materialized into real estate investing. Right. Jonathan, I could guess at this answer, but I won't. I'll let you answer it. What drew you into real estate investing and being interested in it to begin with? Well, my dad at a really early age got me interested in investing. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, did, I did not actually grow up working on a farm. Uh, you still with us, Jay? I'm, I'm right here. All right. Yeah, okay. Well, edit, edit that one out, Scott. <laughs> I, I could mirror his answer quite a bit, but to, to make it a little bit more personal, we uh, actually, uh, I, I kind of got into real estate investing, just thinking of it as another job. At the time I was working, uh, delivering pharmaceuticals to uh, diff the, the far different pharmacies in the area. And uh steadily worked into finding our first deal. And once we did, started working on it, uh, realized very quickly that uh, uh, that's where the money is, is, is in real estate. Uh, obviously, we've grown and developed quite a bit from swinging hammers ourselves to, to working with different people who are uh, more skilled at that kind of thing, but uh, and, and, and putting our time to better use. But what really got me into it was just, I looked at it as another job, something that I could uh, just pay the bills with. And now we're really starting to grow it into a business. I think I just heard you say that, uh, that at one time you were doing your own repairs or renovations or rehabs, right? We have probably put yeah. our last roof on. I know I am. <laughs> well, you know, somebody said to me not long ago, they said, because uh, I had, I was teaching, don't do your own rehabs. I mean, you right. know, it's back to that automation principle. If if I am doing an activity that I can pay somebody else $15 an hour or $20 an hour to do while I'm doing that activity, that's what I'm earning is $15 an hour. Right. I'm still, and so, I'm still learning that. Yeah. Yeah. We, <laughs> we're fighting that on a, on a small yeah, level. Yeah. yeah we're, we're making great strides though. I feel like. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I was teaching that one day. And one of the uh, students says, well, Jay, I just really enjoy doing the rehabs because doing the rehab is like therapy to me. 
Mm-hmm. And I stopped for a second and I said, you know, anybody that does their own rehabs needs therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. That, I agree. That's, that's what you call a true flip. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, listen, um, I know you all do all kinds of deals. I mean, you know, um, you've, you've attracted and raised a lot of private money on the funding of your deals and et cetera. But um, Jonathan, you go first and then Nelson, uh, you can also uh, add in. Give us an overview um, of the kinds of deals that you're doing right now. In right other words, now, the, different, the different ways you're funding them, uh, you know, what's your average price point looking like, et cetera. Yeah, so our average price point is between uh, one, 125 to 250. Uh, we're, what we're really looking for is we, we've been marketing a lot towards foreclosures and, and purchasing those by taking over the responsibility of the note, uh, purchasing them subject to, and, and some of them, a lot of them, uh, are, are needing some work. So, uh, we are hiring that out and then, and then selling on the rent to own or lease option. All right. So just to make sure everybody understands what you just said, <laughs> tell our viewers and listeners what it means to buy a property subject to. Subject to what? Yeah. So it's uh, purchasing the property subject to the mortgage. So what we typically do is we work directly with the seller, uh, making sure that they fully understand that when we take over the title and uh, deed to the property, that the mortgage is actually going to be staying in their name. Now, a lot of times with the foreclosure, they are behind on their payments and we are responsible for making up those payments and then every future payment until we cash them out in full. Right. So the what you're saying is that, uh, and, I, and I do a lot of these as well, which is another creative way for funding the deals. Uh, yeah. that, now, you know, we can use private money with subject to by giving a private lender a second mortgage. And, and use that money for, uh, you know, rehabbing, marketing costs, carrying costs. But what you're saying is that the seller of the property is agreeing to transfer title and actually sell the house to you all while leaving the mortgage in their name. And you agree to make the payments until cash out. Now, who in the world would agree to leave a mortgage in their name and give you title to their house? A well, motivated, motivated seller. seller. <laughs> well, and a lot of times, like I said, it's uh, it, it is foreclosures. However, we have uh, done a couple of subject twos where it wasn't a foreclosure, and uh, it was just convenient for them to go ahead and make sure the house was sold, and they didn't have any more responsibility of that debt. Yeah. So what it does is it uh, it keeps the foreclosure off the record for them. In some cases, uh, you may be able to give them some cash to help them move on. Whereas uh, if you do that, the bank's not going to give them any cash. They're just going to take the property. Right. So uh, a person willing to sell subject to is basically a person that is uh, in really highly motivated to have debt relief and get that right. monthly payment right. off of them. Right. And of course, you help them out too because you bring those payments current that they're behind on. And yeah. so, um, I mean, you know, I have no idea. I've lost count of how many people I've actually, in the process, helped rebuild their credit. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's, that's having, part of uh, our game. Too. Having a performing uh, mortgage payment certainly helps their credit. Exactly. Exactly. Now, how are you finding, you mentioned finding foreclosures. How are you finding most of your foreclosure deals? Uh, we actually have been using your system and, and going to the courthouse and uh, farming that information. And, act, and something new that I haven't even told Dad yet, there's a, a person that we've uh, gotten in contact with that actually does all the notices, uh, the services, the notices of the uh, default to the, the property owners. Um, and he, he contracts that out, but I'm getting with him to start doing a little bit more and being more uh, proactive. Uh, where we've been doing the eight sequential letter mail outs to the people, we may actually do some door knocking on some uh, some houses that seem like they may be more receptive to selling. Right. Well, and also, even though we get a high response rate to the eight letter sequential campaign, what I've discovered is that a lot of people that are in uh, the foreclosure uh, process uh, they just, their emotions and their lives are just shut down and they, a lot of them don't even open their mail, you know? Mm-hmm. 
Um, and so, yeah, I want to hear how your door knocking goes. I've got, I've got friends that do knock on doors. Um, I'd really be interested to hear. Go ahead. (laughs) We're not going to knock on any disgruntled uh, homeowner's doors, that's for sure. But we, you know, because whenever they service the notice, that's going to be one of the questions I ask. What's their demeanor? You know, if if they're if they're pleasant, if they're kind, you know, then obviously that would be a candidate. If they're belligerent, then we'll probably just pass on it. Right, right. Have you decided yet uh, when when you get that report uh, of the person that serves the notices? Have you decided? what you're going to say when you knock on the door. I'm going to have to sit down and write out that script. <laughs> All right. I'm not sure that I, I'm not sure I'm going to be the one knocking on the door, but uh, I'm certainly not by myself. Uh, we, uh, we, we will be, uh, we will be approaching it from a standpoint of we're here to help. If you want your, our help, if not, then that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. I'll be interested to hear how that goes. Um, okay. What, okay. Nelson, I'll start with you. What would you say is your biggest or one of your biggest mistakes and lessons learned in real estate investing? Mm, I've learned so many, <laughs> gone, gone through so many hurdles. Uh, uh, I, I guess maybe uh, avoiding, you, you don't want to get caught up in it where it becomes real personal. And I, uh, Jonathan can attest to this, that I've, taken over sellers and uh, we've narrowed it down to two or three candidates on a house. And I just can't call myself to be able to call somebody and tell them, uh, sorry, you didn't make the cut on this one. We'll keep you in the system for the next house. So, uh, but the mistakes I've made, as I alluded to earlier was back in 07, the biggest one was, that greed factor of let's keep doing deals and buy bigger and more deals and land development. And, you know, it, it caught up with us. So. Right. Right. How about you, Jonathan? Uh, I think I'm still learning uh, at different stages in the business, but obviously like we had, uh, like, like we discussed the uh, handing off responsibility. Uh, I think in the forefront of it, we took on a lot of responsibility on ourselves. So it was uh, slow getting started with uh, us doing the rehabs ourselves. Uh, Now we have other people doing the rehabs for us, but at a different stage in the business, I'm still working to try to let things go and uh, have other people doing some of the things that I don't necessarily need to be doing. Right. Okay. Um, so let's uh, change gears a little bit and um, let's talk about a deal that you all have done. So let's do a case study. Um, so think of a deal that you've done. And what I'd like our viewers and listeners to hear is how did you find the deal? OK, so this could be like, you know, one of your, you know, one of your great deals. Uh, how did you find the deal? How did you fund the deal? Um, but what's the numbers? What did you buy it for? Uh, if it was rehab, how much rehab in it? How much you selling it for? How long did it take you to do the deal from start to finish? Uh, does one like that come to mind where you can just tell the story? You, well, you, you expect well, us to remember <laughs> to all those questions? That, well, um, actually, Nelson, I don't expect you to remember. My okay, all right. I'll remember. pass this one off to Jonathan. <laughs> well, and, and honestly, the one that pops into my head, and obviously we're doing different type deals now where we're, we're doing more with creative funding rather than buying all cash and selling all cash. Uh, but one that really jumps out to us is a little house that we had over on Hollow Brook Drive. And um, it, it, it kind of uh, attests to the value of wholesalers where I've kind of uh, begun to uh, discredit a lot of people who are kind of fly by night investors who are trying to get out there and make a buck, but never really produce any kind of deals. And they call them, themselves wholesalers. But this actually came from a, a good wholesaler, uh, a friend of ours. And we actually still work with them, use them as a project manager on some of our flips now. All right, let me inter- let me interrupt you right there. So to make sure our viewers and listeners know what you're talking about, tell sure. everybody what is a wholesaler in real estate investing. Absolutely. So instead of me negotiating the deal, uh, he's actually already negotiated the deal with the seller, and he's selling me that contract. So uh, the, the paper, the paper yeah. on on the on the purchase of the house. So 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 the wholesaler found the deal. 
uh, right. through whatever kind of marketing that the wholesaler does. He's got the deal under contract. He's going to assign that contract to you and you're going to pay the wholesaler an assignment fee, right? That's right. That's right. Okay. Well, right. And, and, and a lot of times, you know, you think of a wholesale transaction, they might make five or $10,000. Um, this house, he made $40,000 on the assignment and we made wow. over $40,000 on 40. the rehab. Yeah. So and, and could have made more. We left some on the table on that uh, one. <laughs> uh, his situation was he was with a business partner that didn't want to buy any houses, which worked to our advantage. So they wholesaled the property to us. And, uh, you know, I could be upset that he made 40000 but why would I be upset whenever I made over yeah. 40000 yeah. uh, And everybody, it's a win-win-win there. So All right, so uh, let's, let's drill down on the numbers. So uh, the, the wholesaler had this property under contract to buy it for how much? Uh, right around 70. Yeah. All right, 70. So then so then you gave the wholesaler $40,000. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. so you, were to, you were totally in it just at the purchase of 70 plus 40, so 110,000, right? right? Right. And then how much in uh, renovations or rehab? We only put about 20,000 into it. Um, and so then that, we ended up yeah. So then you had one hundred and thirty thousand in it, and then how did you sell it, and for how much? Well, we actually listed this one with the realtor, and we sold it just shy of two hundred. So after closing costs and uh, and commissions and so forth, we we made about forty five thousand on it. Very nice, nice. Yeah. So how long did the process take from the time you got the contract and closed on it and got it cashed out? And I'd have to go back and take a look at when we actually sold it. But I remember we bought it right around January and I think we sold it uh, or no. Yeah. Somewhere around March, March or April. So three, three months. Wow. That's an awesome return on uh, investment. Excellent. I'm not sure what that percent is. <laughs> uh, hey, but hey, the numbers work. I can tell you that. I don't have to get out my calculator for that yeah. one. Yeah. So one lesson I'm hearing from uh, from that story, more than one lesson, but one lesson I'm hearing is, it would be to all of our advantages, uh, all of us the advantage to establish relationships with wholesalers. Absolutely. Most definitely. Yeah, so sure. where do you find, where do you find wholesalers? Tell everybody. Well, you can join a RIA, uh, RIA. Uh, in our area. We also have a uh, professional investors guild, which uh, we actually just had our meeting last, last night, night and uh, signed up on a few more uh, wholesale. Every time I get back there, I'm sure they've got my name multiple times on their buyers list, but I make sure and hit it every time just in case, uh, you know, when, when the deal comes up, I want to be the first one they call. Excellent. Excellent. Now, um, question with you being, uh, with y'all working in the family together, father and son here. And let's see here, Jonathan, your wife is also in the business, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. She started taking over a lot of the office work for us. Right. So what is a challenge or challenges for you all and the family to work together? And how did you fix those challenges? Working on the but, fix. Yeah, well, we're still working on the <laughs> fix. That's an <laughs> ongoing process. But the biggest challenge right now is division of labor. Who's doing mm -hmm. what? Uh, we have really started to nail down uh, those, uh, those specific responsibilities for each person. Um, they still overflow with the, with one another, but we do need to uh, work on making sure that uh, she's taking care of office work, dad's taking care of uh, the buyers, I'm taking care of the sellers, and then we're all looking for private money. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Well, and, and another thing too is when you're around each other so much, it's from my experience, it's very easy to assume everybody else knows what's going on. And what you've got going on, and that's not necessarily the case. So, so you know, one recommendation that I give to definitely, you know, families that are working together, you need to have <laughs> that, you know, regularly scheduled meeting time to where y'all actually sit down and share with each other as to what's going on, you know, and just keep everybody updated instead of, well, I see them all the time, so they must know what's going on. Uh, um, have you run into that kind of thing on the com communication piece? We have, and. To that point, we've made good attempts at right after our uh, accountability call on Monday mornings with Crystal. Uh, we're together and, you know, we, we need to come up with a checklist. Everybody, here's what we're bringing to the meeting to discuss whatever and then sit down and 
make sure we're all on the same page. There you go. There you go. Um, let's see here. What would you say is um, the best advice that you would give to a new real estate investor? Delegate would be, uh, I, I mean, as soon as, uh, as soon as you're, uh, economically able, I would start looking for those people that you can plug in and start doing some of the things that, uh, that you're, I mean, as a real estate investor, you're doing so many different things, especially if you're doing so, uh, creative financing deals. Uh, there's a lot of work and responsibility and, uh, finding those people that can take over some of those tasks and uh, really, it'll, it'll really start to help build your business. Uh, right. You know, when we were doing the rehabs ourselves, obviously we were doing maybe one, two houses, uh, three houses, five a year, year just five, five a year, year at the most was what we were able to get to. Uh, but since we've started using rehabbers, we've doubled that. And then since we've started really uh, leaning on each other's response, uh, gifts and, and uh, strengths, then we're able to actually start scaling even more. Right. Nelson? Well, and Jonathan hit it right on the head is to let go and let other people, not number one, that can do things that I enjoy doing, but they can do them even better than I can and, and use my time more efficiently at creating uh, purchases. And in Jonathan's case, his, him making the purchase and me making the sale. So, okay, very good. All right, well, we're just about out of time, but I got a couple more questions for you before we wrap up. Uh, Jonathan, I'll come back to you, and that is what is a personal habit of yours that you have that you would say um, really attributes to your success? Uh, and I've really been working on this ever since I've come into your world and, and, uh, been uh, in in the mastermind group and, and that group uh, has been very supportive and trying to help me really drill down on what I need to be doing and sticking to a daily method of operation. So uh, right now I know exactly what I, I need to be doing and I know exactly what I'm going to be doing throughout the day, uh, whether it be uh, finding deals or, or talking to sellers, talking to private lenders, going to deal meetings. I know exactly what I'm doing and sticking to that schedule, I think is really uh, built up into one of the strengths that I have. Awesome. Uh, Nelson, a personal success habit of yours. Well, and it's, it's always, you know, you got to be kind of self-motivated. You got to have the desire. You got to have the enthusiasm, uh, the drive. It's, all, it's a little bit of all of that. And I've always I've never shied away from work. I just need to focus my work efforts in the right direction better. Excellent. Um, yeah. All right. So last question. I'll come back over to you, Jonathan. What's one of the uh, what's a book that you have read or listened to if you're on audible.com or whatever? Uh, other than the Bible, I know you all are uh, Christians such as myself, but uh, what book have you read that's really made a big impact in your life and why? Well, and I, I've got two books that really pop out to me. Uh, the Go-Giver was was a, a change for me because it really uh, put the focus on what I can do for the seller, what I can do for the buyer, what I can do for the private lender, and, and not necessarily what's in it for me. Um, and the second book I've actually, uh, gotten into listening to audio books, uh, quite a bit. And, and one of the ones that I've listened to several times is Darren Hardy's, uh, uh, compound effect. And it's been very helpful in trying to, and showing me what I need to be doing, uh, the small things and how, a bit, how much of a change it makes over time. Excellent. How about you, Nelson? Well, and I didn't realize we were so connected, but now I can tell my age because mine is a Zig Ziglar book, <laughs> which is, uh, I, I'm looking at it here on the shelf. And when I read over your uh, questions and all, uh, it was the one book that had more little tabs on it and everything. It's The Secrets of Closing the Sale. And it's, you know, Zig Ziglar's, I guess, a uh, quote he uses many times, you can get everything in life you uh, want to get out of life if you just help enough other people get what they want. And, and as Jonathan said, it's all about helping the other person and finding out their needs, their goals, and matching matching it all up. So That's awesome. That's, 
Yeah, I start. I got hooked on Zig Ziglar when I was 24 years old, and uh, I had gone to work full time uh, in my father's mobile home business. So I was in the sales training, and so they, you know, gave us the cassette tapes. Hey, I'm right. Tape. I'm right there with you. I was out there <laughs> selling pharmaceuticals to veterinarians, driving three and four hours uh, right. to a call, and and had the tapes playing. That's it. That's it. Zig Ziglar. Now he could tell a pots and pans story. I tell you. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, y'all. I, I'm just so excited to have y'all here on the show, and I appreciate y'all being here on the show um, with me. And let me remind everybody just one more time: upcoming live event. Get on over to www.jconnor.com forward slash money podcast, and uh, look forward to seeing y'all at the event. So, uh, Jonathan, you got any parting comments or last minute advice? Well, Jay, I just want to say thanks again for letting us uh, uh, come on the show and and share our story. It's always a pleasure. Awesome, and, Nelson. And, and and what I'll add to that is, I, and I think I've said it before, uh, if you are serious about wanting to succeed in real estate, and even if you're not, Jay Connor will force you to be successful. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Nelson. I appreciate it. All right, everybody, as we're signing off on this show, uh, if you're watching on um, on uh, YouTube, uh, you can uh, subscribe so you don't miss out on future shows. Comment in the comment section below with any questions. We'll get your questions answered. Um, and if you are listening on iTunes, uh, subscribe, rate, and review. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, coming to you from Moorhead City, Atlantic Beach, North Carolina. Looking forward to seeing you at the upcoming event. Nelson and Jonathan, thank you so much. We'll be seeing hey, you take soon. Take care. And bye for now. Bye.